Bueno, IBM es eh, Royal Sponsor de este evento y como les decía antes de ir a la pausa, nos vamos a meter en el mundo de IBM y con un invitado de lujo. Les voy a contar un poco acerca de quién nos va a acompañar. Su nombre es Jerry Cuomo, es eh, IBM Fellow, Vice President Blockchain Technologies. Es reconocido como uno de los más prolíficos contribuyentes al negocio del software de IBM, produciendo productos y tecnología que han impactado profundamente. Además, tiene el prestigioso título de IBM Fellow. Es un título que muy pocas personas han accedido al mismo. Fíjense ustedes que en 106 años de existencia de IBM, solamente 300 becarios han sido nombrados como Fellows. Así que tenemos realmente una persona muy destacada. Es un verdadero honor y es alguien que no da conferencias habitualmente. Hi Jerry, how are you? Good, how are you? Thank you for having me. And thank you for accepting our invitation. It's a big pleasure to have you here. And we are ready to hear your conference. Okay. So I, I love to share um, our point of view on blockchain. So let me get right to it. Thanks. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I think if any other time, maybe last year, this time I would talk to you about blockchain, I would have a very different message. Um, we have to face the new world we're living in. And I think, um, I think as you see on this slide, this was based on observations of COVID-19 impact in China, who, was, who were uh, the earlier uh, country to, to witness the effects. We see uh, on business, there are uh, parts of the in industries that have um, extreme uh, headwinds. Of course, the travel and tourism industry uh, are probably most affected. Uh, minimal outdoor activities, reduced transportation, government travel policies are, are, are very strong. You know, so on one side, on the other side, um, there are some um, nice tailwinds um, in, for hygienic project products, um, technology, computer services like Zoom that we're using here have all been a uh, boon, a uh, boon on, on, uh, from, from this environment. But this is a changing world and, and the key to adapt um, and move quickly in this world is now incumbent upon all of us, regardless of where you are in the world. And yes, I'm gonna make the pivot to blockchain now because I do believe that what this new world needs, the new normal needs at, at the center is speed to move fast. And to move fast, trust is really important especially in a digital world. And when we look across this spectrum, I'll just pick on a couple of things. Um, technology computer services. With everyone or many of us working from home, using online services is an important day-to-day -day fact. But you can imagine the help desks that are behind these services are also seeing a massive amount of traffic of people needing help. Those help desks have to verify the users, the authenticity, Um, so that they can give them the right level of service. So verification services to trust the end user is, is, is important. Hygienic project, products, all kinds of products are coming out. How many of them truly do what they say? Can we trace back the authenticity, right? Now, it's not that we can't do these things. We can do all of these things, but we must do them quicker now and do them digitally. Right? And I think this starts to really open up a new opportunity for blockchain to really help hasten the effects of Corona-19 and get us back to some form of the new normal. And um, let me share two quick examples with you that we're seeing in IBM, how blockchain is coming uh, to the center. And we've seen supply chains across the world interrupted. Um, and in many cases, the items in question were not, were available, but they just weren't visible. Uh, your supply chain and your suppliers may have been depleted, but other supply chains may have had the item. So what we see, what we saw is really some inflexibility in supply chains and also new players who are supplying like in the USA Ford Motor Company started making ventilators. And I don't know that um, Ford Motor Company is on the approved list for certain uh, buyers like hospitals. 
So um, one of the things we've been working on is the trust your supplier network powered by uh, blockchain to allow the onboarding process of suppliers to meet and work with buyers. In, in IBM, it, it, we have about 20,000 suppliers and I can imagine uh, hospitals have at least that many, um, you know, government agencies, probably way more than that. It takes about 45 days to onboard a new supplier. And what I hear from other companies, that's not quite unusual. That's pretty normal. And you know, there's rules and regulations that have to be checked off while we're vetting a new supplier. Um, so if we take a shared approach here, maybe um, if someone has gone the 45 days to sign up to be a supplier to IBM, someone that is participating in the IBM network, like one of our business partners, let's take Lenovo. If that supplier wants to be a supplier for Lenovo, instead of taking 45 days, maybe it only takes five days to do, right? So that's now, you know, uh, allowing new suppliers to come on rapidly and also exposing suppliers to a broader set of buyers, right? So trust your supplier is just in time. We started working on this before COVID. And when COVID hit, we said, oh my gosh, let's work with medical communities to start you know, leveraging uh, this network. And we've made this available um, uh, over, the, over the summer uh, for, for buyers and suppliers to use. So it's a great example of the distributed shared trusted nature of blockchain, allowing um, more agility, more flexibility, more speed in your supply chain. Data, um, trust in data is critical. And one of the things that uh, we're seeing is um, the need for verified, attested data. Yes, there's plenty of data available from multiple organizations, but to truly move fast and react to that data, we need to trust that that data is authentic and hasn't been tampered with uh, either maliciously or, or accidentally. Um, some novel work happening around trusted data related to COVID-19 is a network called the MIPASA network. If you go to mipasa.org, you will see the wonderful data hub that has been created on top of the Hyperledger fabric, which is an open source blockchain that I, it's, it happens to be what fuels the IBM blockchain. And this is, um, providing data, verified data from the World Health Organization, um, hospitals like John Hopkins University, governments, and is creating this hub, uh, both providing the multi-party verification, but also kind of a platform for building new applications that maybe mash up the data, do analytics and recontribute that data as new data streams. Uh, for the hub. Again, trust equals speed um, equals, you know, uh, outcomes and, and results. So we are in this new norm and blockchain, we have examples of blockchain aiding in the distribution of trusted information um, for supply chain, for um, general COVID data and many more examples. Trust is an important part of everything we do. And in this new normal, bringing technology to bear um, like AI and IoT. And I believe blockchain is at the nexus of new technology, really bringing, of course, that element of trust. Um, and you know, when you think about AI and, and models, AI models and machine, learning or training of, of these models, the training data. How could we, or, or why should we trust this data? I mean, uh, around the world now, when you produce a piece of food, it usually comes with a government label that shows you what food is actually in that product. But there's no such label on, on AI 
um, models or AI training data. We don't really know. There is no uh, audit trail or, or provenance back to the originators of, of that data. And the same thing is true for IoT. How do we really know that that IoT sensor hasn't uh, been tampered with? What, what is the origin of the firmware in that IoT device that it's t saying um, that it's reporting on temperature or reporting on location of a car? Um, how do we really know that that data is true? So we are really looking at blockchain inside, blockchain inside these emerging technologies to bring that level of trust, right? So um, this is an example that uh, we've encountered at least twice with IBM blockchain. And, and you know, in a world of, of, um, of COVID, you know, the, the art of renting a car um, as an example, um, has been really changed. You, you can see both opportunistic new companies coming in with touchless car sharing, and on the other side, uh, more established rental car companies really struggling, right? And kind of bringing these pieces together around blockchain, where there's a secure environment for doing uh, touchless payments, verifying location, and this notion of an autonomous smart contract ensuring that your um, insurance, your, um, your payment, um, your availability of the car that you're standing in front of, ultimately to deliver the digital key that you can press and let yourself into the car, you know, without having to really interact with another human. So blockchain transaction platforms that bring uh, AI and IoT to bear around these autonomous executing contracts is just in time for the COVID environment. Let me take a step back and, and tell you how we got here. And, and I, I know blockchain is a fuel for multiple things. Uh, and cryptocurrency has held its value through the last few months, which was, is interesting to see. Um, but in, in, in IBM, what really inspires us is kind of this journey. You know, we, we've, we have a history and transaction system. Still many of the world's um, enterprises run on IBM systems. And you know, if you look at the various generations from the mainframe generation of transaction processing to the distributed web-based um, and mobile-based transaction systems, again, IBM has always been in the center of this, these trends in, in, in transactions. So having put my kids through school around transaction processing and a product called WebSphere, I was tuned into this. And then when we saw Bitcoin uh, come on the scene, um, it got our attention. Um, and is there a new way to transact here? And, and we asked the question, but yes, there, there, there may be a new way to transact, but what about other applications that other industries and governments care about? I mean, if there's a thousand applications for blockchain, maybe cryptocurrency is one, but what about the other 999? Then we saw Ethereum and we really were inspired when we saw this thing called a smart contract because in the smart contract, it really helped us bridge the gap between blockchain applied to all of these industries through the programmability of transactions through smart contracts. But there was something missing from Ethereum, which was the element of, of trust, um, the element of accountability um, to pass many of the world's regulations, um, you know, like GDPR, yeah, you have to know who, who's backing a system, right? Who is behind, who are the participants? So members of a network can't be anonymous, they have to be known. So while looking at how we might do that to Ethereum, we started working on some code, which ultimately uh, led to the creation of, at the time, about 20 companies came together around the Linux Foundation to form the Hyperledger project. And the code we started building became Hyperledger Fabric. And today, you know, some four years and a half later, IBM Blockchain is supporting about 1,100 networks um, worldwide, about 10% of those are active consortia networks and, and several of those are changing everyday life, especially in this new normal. So if you look at 
what these examples are building on, they're building on the IBM blockchain platform. The center of this is open source. We have a commercial distribution of Hyperledger fabric that we stand behind. It is 100% authentic, but we pick the version from GitHub. We run a battery, it tests against it, and we certify that particular build. It's something we can stand behind and offer support. And yes, some people forget, they think blockchain is magic. It, it is magical, but it is also software and humans write software and humans tend to make uh, errors from time to time. So the ability to continue to improve, to maintain and to support the software is critical. We have some advanced tooling that sits on top of Hyperledger Fabric to make it easy to build and operate networks. Um, while these tools um, are specific to IBM blockchain, they generate 100% Hyperledger Fabric um, uh, authentic artifacts, meaning if you build a network with these tools or you've been operating these with our tools um, and for whatever reason you get disappointed in IBM, you can pick, pick up your network and move it to, to another place. You can move it to uh, you know, Amazon with their blockchain service, which is also built on Hyperledger Fabric as is Oracle's and several others around the world. So you have freedom of, of action, even if you use our advanced tooling. Networks are meant to be distributed in blockchain. So um, nodes in our network could run anywhere. And we do that through the magic of open source technology and specifically Kubernetes, um, the IBM Kubernetes service, and of course, Red Hat OpenShift. And that gives us entree to run nodes in a blockchain network on any of the popular clouds, as well as on your own premises and in combinations thereof, right? So that's kind of a snapshot of IBM blockchain platform. Um, recently now available is the IBM blockchain platform in the Red Hat marketplace. And this has um, a couple of things that are pretty interesting. You can uh, kind of digitally serve yourself. And again, in, in the COVID world, that might be uh, useful because um, um, uh, we probably won't be flying to your location anytime soon, but we'd love to do a, a Zoom with you. But um, you don't have to, because it's all there um, online to, to not only um, learn about, but you can actually try it right there. So there, we have a 30 day free trial and you can actually instantiate it right there in off the marketplace. So um, you could uh, not only learn about it, but you can try it and, and, and go through the points I was saying. And maybe, you know, uh, next time I give a talk like this, I'll give, uh, I'll show one of your examples. So uh, I, I know I've kind of gone through this very, very fast, but the, the message is, is we're in a new normal and it's, um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful time to embrace that new normal. I think in embracing the new normal, um, trust is key because trust um, will allow us to consume new digital services with, with, with speed uh, that comes with the certainty and assurance that those services are authentic. The data within those, those uh, services have been attested. Um, and we've been working on networks like the Trust Your Supplier Network, uh, the Secure Key Verified Me Network for, for uh, verification of, of identity and, and, and many others that play very well into this new normal. Um, and of course, you know, we have a, a commercial distribution of a very popular open source permission blockchain, which is Hyperledger Fabric um, and the IBM blockchain platform which in, in, in is, is powered by that, uh, that project. And it's available today uh, for a free trial on, on the uh, Red Hat marketplace. So um, I'm not sure if there's a way to take questions, but I probably have about three minutes left. Well, we only have to, to tell you thank you very much. It was just a great pleasure for us to have you here. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone. Have a great day, Jerry. Bye bye. Bueno, un verdadero placer compartir esta nueva conferencia con Jerry Cuomo desde los Estados Unidos.